This amazing view is right near the top of Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. It's considered one of the most dangerous hikes in America, so obviously I'm going to do it. The four of us woke up at 4 a.m., drank our coffee, made our sandwiches, met a bird friend, and started the 18-mile round trip to get on those cables before a storm could roll in and drop a bolt of lightning on us. Now, I wasn't doing this just to feel like the king of the world, although that was cool. I was here to test something. This is the Panasonic GH4. It's got a pretty good sensor. The difference between the brightest color it can sense and the darkest is about 4,000 times. And when you hook it up to a bulky external unit, it works well. Not perfect, but pretty good for its price point. But I wasn't about to take all this to the top of the mountain. So I wanted to try something that a bunch of people said wouldn't work for HDR, which is, instead of recording on a big unit like this, just use the internal SD card in the camera. Now if this works, it's important for two reasons. One is that videos on YouTube should be easy to make. If HDR is going to be useful, it shouldn't be hard. And two is obviously cost. If people can shoot HDR with the gear they already have, we're going to see a lot more of it. So I wanted to test out the GH4 with no external recorder, just body and lens, which means I'd be facing one of the biggest limitations of modern DSLR. The video on pretty much all of them is 8-bit and heavily compressed. So remember how the brightest color on this thing is about 4,000 times brighter than the darkest? Well, with 8-bit color, we only get about 200 steps to represent that entire range. And when you don't have enough bits for your brightness range, you get an artifact called banding. Having 8 bits is like having a meter stick where you only have a mark every 10 centimeters. You'll still get a length in the right range when you measure it, but it won't be that precise. Adding more bits is like adding more marks on the ruler, so you can get closer to the right value. 8-bit isn't too bad for SDR, but if you're talking about high dynamic range, most experts think you need at least 10 bits. And no doubt about it, having those extra bits means it's easier and more reliable to get something that looks good. But it turns out that you can still get some pretty good results with just 8 bits. Not perfect, no way is it perfect, but it's acceptable. And there are some big caveats to that conclusion. One is there wasn't a lot of variety in what we shot on the hike. Any Californian in this drought is going to be mesmerized by flowing water. And between Matt and I, we ended up doing something like this shot. A slow pan from a waterfall to a sun-kissed mountain 12 times in a row, all without planning to. But what we got were actually worst-case shots in a lot of ways. The water and granite have a ton of detail. The pan shots have pretty huge dynamic range, and those uniformly lit mountain shots with bright blue skies are perfect tests for banding. One thing that kind of surprised me was once you got to the top, there wasn't a lot of dynamic range in what we were shooting. When the ground is miles away, the refraction of the air brightens up the shadows, which means a lot of that footage got really stretched out in grading. Even with all of that, I still got decent results out of this footage, although I really had to work hard for it. This footage doesn't have as much room to be playful as something like Red Raw or Cinema DNG, and I really had to fuss with it to get it to grade properly. There were a few specific issues. One of the first, as we expected, was banding. So I denoised this material before grading it and selectively blurred the results to fight the banding, which is the only reason the sky doesn't look like hot garbage. Another problem is the color blotching you'll see in this shot. I think using a polarizing filter made this worse, but it's still the case that the color shifts at the high end are way beyond what's acceptable, and they needed a lot of special handling. And one last issue was hue shifts that we got over time on certain scenes. I have no idea where this is coming from, and because it happens over time, it's really hard to correct for. Now with those flaws in mind, shooting HDR video on the GH4 with internal recording is workable. Now would I shoot my short film in this? Not a chance. At a minimum, I'd use an external recorder. On the other hand, just the battery for the Ursa Mini weighs more than the camera and lens combined. And that means I'm going to take it places that I would never take a professional cine camera. Now here's what I didn't try, and I'll get to in a later episode. I didn't take the polarizer off during the hike, so I don't know if that would have made things better when it comes to the color blotching. The bit rates on this thing are a little low for 4K, but at 1080p they might be high enough to avoid some of the weirder compression artifacts. And even though I do love a fast prime lens, this one doesn't have image stabilization in the lens, so probably not the best idea to shoot handheld on a hike. Richard calls me a prime-loving hipster, but I'm willing to try a zoom if I have to. Now here's a bunch of clips from the hike. I didn't grade all of these to my satisfaction because there's just a lot here, but it should give you a good idea of what's possible. I hope you enjoy. Yeah, they're crazy. Um, the weather is like a little cloudy. Like not but it's hot. not supposed to rain. I don't know. Um, it's pretty hot in the valley here, but it's not supposed to be super hot tomorrow. The... Did you bring the code names game? Code names game? Don't mention that. Okay. Yeah. So we made a wrong turn. <laughs> It's fine. Hey, babe.
she, Charlotte's not like our sandwich maker. Oh, that's not how I thought this was gonna work. <laughs> what, filming the yeah. sandwich process? Yeah. Passies, get a little energy boost. That is your, um, um... That's snow. Snow. John Snow. So, just like, once again, it's the middle of summer. Well, I mean, it's the start of summer. It's the start of summer. Snow. Two what? lefty loosey, righty tiny. <laughs> Unless it's a camel pack and then it's righty loosey. The arrows are pointing tiny. this way, but there's like a yeah. thing. Yeah, the arrows are how to loosen it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what helps is that I'm filming you. Everyone can see. Yeah, no, that makes us a lot better. Remember we wanted napkins on the last one? Oh, now I can see. Bring yeah, you you're welcome. <laughs> well, uh, because we're looking at you? We can turn our backs, just not the camera. Gosh, just don't. <laughs> We're just really the light in the camera on you. Keep going. You got it. You got it. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get you it. You got it. I don't know how this thing works. You got it. Huh? Oh. To open it, really? Yeah. That's <laughs> open, that's why the dot is open, and that's closed, that's why the dot is closed. You're a fucker, dude. <laughs> Mother of God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fucking ass. <laughs> you're a fucking ass, not words. <laughs> Fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs>